Billy Doyle is a yoga and non-duality teacher and both the yoga and non-duality aspects are very much in the spirit of his teacher, Jean Klein, who was a master teacher of Advaita Vedanta, also went deeply into yoga, both with uh, Krishnamacharya, the influential teacher of many, many current teachers. And, um, and then also he came in contact with a stream of Kashmiri yoga, which takes a very subtle approach to listening to the body and sort of letting its real, much more liberated than we imagine nature speak for itself. Um, it's a very meditative approach. Um, he is the author of three books, Yoga in the Kashmir Tradition, The Art of Listening, and two books of poetry, The Mirage of Separation and Ocean of Silence. And um, I heard him read a few of these poems in an interview, and uh, I recommend, you know, I'm going to get these books myself, I believe. They're um, something quite special about how just sweetly distilled they are. And, um, oh, I see that Billy has joined us. Hi, Billy. Welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. So sorry for the <laughs> hiccups. I've, I've already launched into introducing you, and I'm just now talking about your books. Um, so yes, The Mirage of Separation and Ocean of Silence, from which I've heard just a few poems that Billy read in an interview. And um, they just struck me as so resonant and and just sort of each one just a like a very short footpath into you know one's own freedom silence so um yeah they're 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 potent special and sweet little poems um and, Yes, and that, that's about it, um, except to say that um, uh, w one among many reasons that I'm eager for Billy to speak to us is that, you know, I personally have found uh, Jean Klein's approach to, to body awareness, body exploration has been incredibly good company in Zazen, um, as well as in Kinhin and driving and having a conversation what have you. Um, so so I think it's deeply complimentary. Um, and as you'll see, Billy is just a beautiful spirit who has beautifully helpful things to share. And um, it's some measure of his generosity and his spirit of service that he's <laughs> talking to us at one in the morning, <laughs> his time. We can say our real nature is consciousness, awareness, presence. There are no words for what our true nature is really but we need to use words to communicate. But we take ourselves not to be simply presence, awareness, but an object in awareness, a body, a mind, a personality. And by doing so, we forget our real nature. That silence that we are is always there. But we are orientated outwards, taken by our sense perceptions. 
And so I take myself to be a particular body mind, a particular personality. In doing so, we lose sight of our real nature. When we become identified with an object, we inevitably invite insecurity, fear, desire. This entity, the ego, can never be totally happy, contented. And so it will pursue objects, experiences, to fill up the empty hole <clears throat> that is the ego. <clears throat> and we will go from one experience to another, one object to another, <clears throat> to try and satisfy our yearning, our yearning for happiness, for fullness. And this will continue, maybe even for a lifetime or until we begin to see nothing, no object can totally bring what I'm looking for. It may do for a short while, but then I'm looking again for something else. And this may start a deeper questioning in us. We may begin to ask deeper questions. Where really does happiness lie if it doesn't lie in objects? There may begin a spiritual search. We may hear from a teacher that our true nature is not the body, not the mind, not the personality. And we may have an intuition ourselves that there is something beyond, greater. And we may start trying to change ourselves trying to find more harmony, more peace, change our behavior. But unless we really learn to observe ourselves, by which I mean just listening, not trying to change, but just listening, not <clears throat> trying to analyze, criticize, but just this quality of observation. That you let unfold whatever is there. Observe yourself in day-to-day -day activities, in your relations with others. Again, not trying to change it, but when you observe, listen in this way, you find yourself no longer locked in what you're observing. You find a certain space a certain distancing, a, a kind of natural detachment comes. So you allow an unfolding. There's a sense, a certain sense of freedom when you 
learn simply to listen to yourself, observe yourself. As I say, without trying to change things. You find yourself just listening, just observing. It gives you a certain freedom from what you I'd have always identified with. This a pattern, this <clears throat> set of ideas that we take ourselves to be. But they're just perceptions. The question is, who is the perceiver? Who is the know? The ego, the self-image is a contraction from our real nature. And it has its counterpart as well on the level of the body. When I take myself to be somebody, there's also a kind of physical contraction, tension. It affects every aspect of our being. So my breathing, the flow of energy in my body, <clears throat> the heaviness, these are also <clears throat> the product of taking myself to be a separate entity. So it's important not just to explore ourselves on the psychological level, but also on the level of the body. By listening to the body, we can discover the real body. When you come to a, a deeply relaxed body and just listen and allow the feeling to awaken, you come to a different experience of your body. It's a body just of energy, of vibration, of spaciousness. And this feeling of spaciousness, which is without borders, without inside and outside, gives us a glimpse, a forefeeling of our real nature. So these two elements, exploring myself on a psychological level, just observing myself and coming to a freedom from the perceived and also listening to your body brings you to, again, just this a state of listening, where you no longer emphasize even the body, the spaciousness, but just the feeling of brings you to listening, to openness. The mind can never bring you through thought to come to know your real nature. The mind can understand and take you so far. Helps you to understand you're not a perception. I'm not the body, I'm not the mind, I'm not memory, I'm not my thoughts. But the mind cannot bring you to who you are, what you are. It's beyond the mind. Because mind deals with concepts. But 
when the mind can really understand that it can never understand, it brings the mind to quietness. It brings it to a certain humility. In that giving up of looking, of trying to grasp, of searching, the mind comes to quiet. And it's open to a different dimension. You come to a state of not knowing and living in this feeling of not knowing. And it's only when we come to this not knowing that we're available ultimately to the understanding. We become open to openness. We can never go to the reality because we are the reality. We are presence. It's not something you need to travel to. It's not something you can grasp. Then you stay in your head. One comes to a, a deep innocence. We become available. And when we don't take ourselves to be the body, when we don't take ourselves to be the personality, we give freedom to the personality. It becomes spontaneous, creative, when we don't lock ourselves in the past and ideas about ourselves. We find ourselves being nobody, then all possibilities are there. So this, let this be the introduction to our discussion. Um, so I'm happy to take any of your questions. Um, so if you do have a question, um, Please, um, if you'd like to go ahead. And feel free, people on Zoom, either to use the hand raise function or just to unmute uh, when there's a chance such as there is now. Yes, John. Yes, uh, thank you. Hi, Billy. Um, hi, hi, John. Um, I, had a, I think the last time that I listened to your talk, um, a week ago or so, um, I asked you a question about um, about listening, and yeah. um, and in that case, it had to do with um, I was using the example of um, and listening to a bird song and uh, just sort of ambient sounds in the room or in the uh, around the house, that sort of thing. And um, my experience with that is that 
um, at the level of my perception of the sounds um, or the, I guess I could say, I'm, it doesn't seem to be a someone who's actually hearing the sounds. It's just, uh, yeah, it's 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 like that, um, and um, there's no kind of identifiable identifiable uh, place within me that I I could say is the uh, uh, witness to the sounds or the observer. I find it, the the my question now is. Um, uh, regarding other senses, uh, like touch, feeling a touch, for example, I find that's a little bit harder to disassociate uh, kind of my, my identity with touch or the uh, visceral experience of touch. Yeah. Um, to, um, uh, in the same way as with sound. Sound seems to be kind of maybe pure in a, in a way. Yeah. Okay. So, as you say, when you hear the bird singing, yeah, it's, it's just hearing. There's just the sound. Right. Um, after, so, it's a non-Jew dual experience. There's no division. It's not I'm listening to the bird at that moment. There's just the bird. Consciousness is one with the sound. It's also true when we simply look, look at the tree. There's just, there's just looking. It's afterwards that we intervene and say, I was looking at the tree. But at the moment of looking, there's just looking. Um, you're one with the tree. Consciousness is one with the tree. It's afterwards that the mind comes in and says, I, which is <laughs> um, an object, was looking at the tree, another object, so there's object to object <clears throat> um, division. But at the time of just looking, there was just looking. Um, you were one with the tree. When you look around the room, when you don't conceptualize, again, there's no naming. There's just seeing. So <clears throat> it's only afterwards that we divide and the mind comes in and says, I did this, I did that, I touched that, I <clears throat> um, smelt this, I tasted this. But that pure perception is just the senses, sensing, tasting, hearing, touching, listening. It's afterwards that we make the division. So, um, so the more you're empty of yourself, there isn't an I stepping in and saying, I did this, I did that. There was just pure doing, pure seeing. You're one with what's around, and you feel it. So what's important is not to jump too quickly to conceptualizing. Just staying with the <clears throat> with the listening, staying with the seeing, letting it unfold. Of course, we need concepts to communicate, but we're too quick to conceptualize. It's because we live so much in our head instead of just being. Then we're more open. Life is richer. Experiences are richer when you're not classifying them up here all the time.
Um, and also just the way you see. So when you look at the tree, I would say, just let the tree come to you. We tend to kind of grasp with our eyes or other senses, which creates tension. And so let the world come to you. See the world, but just let it come. We tend to grasp with our senses, particularly the eyes, which brings tension to the eyes and to the brain. Sif, yes, let things come to you. It's a different way of seeing, hearing. We're no longer grasping. Okay, thank you, John. No, you're good, no, just okay. let's turn it up. So. Hi, Billy. Can you hear me? I can, yes. Okay. My name is Susan. Hey. Um I'm not quite sure the question yet. Um I I guess it's for about a year now I've been experiencing quite a bit of pain in the body. Yeah. And um, I think it, it's been about a year since I've been kind of studying non-duality. Um, so conceptually understanding I'm not the body, um, that this body, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this right. I don't really quite understand it. The body's in consciousness. But I guess the point is I'm not, I don't really understand how to work with this pain as an observer. Um, I guess that would, how to, how to work with the pain as a, the observer. And then also you had just in the meditation talked about tuning into the body, listening to the body. So does that kind of, does that imply like asking the body a question? Like, what do you need? So anyways, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what's on the forefront right now. Okay, thank you, thank you. So, when there's pain in the body, um, again, we tend to fix the pain, conceptualize it, running away from the feeling of the pain. So I would say it's important just to face the pain, allow it, don't even name it, but just give it the opportunity to, to be felt. So here, we instead of reacting and creating a barrier or forcing the pain to be fixed, you just give it the opportunity to be more open, to be to integrate more. And instead of going straight to the feeling of the pain, I would say, Generally, it's better just to go to the feeling of your whole body, experience your whole body, even the feeling of space around you, because that helps to delocalize the pain. It helps that frozen energy to, <clears throat> to melt. 
So it's knowing how to face pain and not immediately to make it into an idea because then it will not unfold, it will not release. So it, what's important is to actually experience it and allow it. Then you give it the best opportunity to release itself. And of course, the more we're identified with the body, the more we tend to keep the pain. And the more you just allow your body to be and understand your body simply to be a perception, you have the feeling, yes, there's pain there, but somehow the pain is in me, but I'm not in the pain. The pain is in consciousness, yes, but consciousness is not in the pain. So it brings a certain freedom from being so heavily identified with the sensation. And then you give it the best opportunity to release itself as well. Of course, there are many ways of dealing with pain. There are many therapies, um, that one has the possibilities of working with. It depends on the pain, of course. But here we're just talking about how just through listening, um, we can help free ourselves in a certain way from pain. Can you expand please on what you mean by listen to the body? I, yeah. I don't really understand that. Right. Okay. Maybe at the end of the class, uh, our meeting, I'll. We can do something of this nature, listening to the body. It means just our body is so much an idea in our heads. When we wake up in the morning, we create its memory, but we don't really contact our real body. It's a memory from, from over many years. But when we really listen to the body, by which I mean sense it, feel it, let it come to life. And if you really listen to your hands, you will experience them just as warmth, as vibration, as energy. And when you come to this energy feeling of your body, your whole body, it's like a healing factor as well. You help to heal the body when your real body comes to life, which I call the energy body, the subtle body. And this body has no borders. There isn't a feeling of inside or outside. So for me, this is the real body the energy body. But to experience it, first of all, there has to be a deep relaxation and just listening, letting the feeling come to you. It's not creating it. It's not going to memory. It's, it's just experiencing it in the moment. Ultimately, listening to the body brings us to listening itself, awareness itself. And we no longer emphasize what we're listening to, but just the feeling of listening itself. It brings us to our real nature. We don't emphasize any perception anymore. we come back to silence. In fact, every object is just a reminder that we are the ultimate perceiver of everything there is. So the world doesn't take us away from our real nature. Correctly understood, it just reminds us who we are ultimately.
Thank you. Um, uh, Billy, I have a, a pretty half-formed question, um, yeah. and it's partly just sort of <laughs> because I I feel a duty, which maybe I don't need to at all, to like um, ask a question on behalf of people who are used to a Buddhist framework, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And um, so, um. You know, and there's a there's there's a long history of philosophical suspicions between Buddhist and Vedantic traditions, and then mm. coinciding at other moments and stuff. And um, and so I think a couple of the suspicions that some Buddhist thinkers have had historically are that when um, an Advaita teacher or somebody. Uh, you know, invites you to 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 not objectify yourself and to to you know, as John Klein would say, that your nearest can't be objectified and doesn't need to be, which is you know a great freedom. Um, you know, they might suspect this of being a subtle dualism between the changeless and the changing, or or kind of a substantialization of a witness consciousness, something like that. I was very struck, you know, I, I don't feel this way myself. <laughs> I feel that, you know, what you are, the, the way you're invoking, um, I think if, 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 if one really takes seriously not objectifying whatsoever, then this means that, you know, you're, it's like splashing into a sea or something. There's no keeping objects out either. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no, there's no possible duality um, in that. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm just tripping over myself. <laughs> I, I, yes. Um, uh, I guess I, one question is, okay, let me make it simpler. When you're talking so beautifully about um, letting the feeling of the body come alive uh, and how in the feeling of the body coming alive, without constraint, it frees you from, you know, feeling confined in any of its regions. Um, mm. This seems to be, to be kind of, in a way, ceasing to objectify the objective as well as the subjective. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's, 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 it's ceasing to, oh, well, I may not be able to produce a coherent <laughs> question tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have any any if, if you have any riffs on anything I've said, it's um, as as I was saying, it's um, the body is for most people. It's it's an idea. It's a, it's a concept. It's we're not deeply acquainted with the real body because it's so fixed in our minds what the body is. Um, and when we wake up in the morning, we re the pattern it becomes repeated. And um, and we live with that. Um, certain fixation but if we would really come to the relaxed feeling first of all and then 
really listen to the body, letting the body just be the body and not a concept in the mind, we experience something that <clears throat> is like space, is a certain kind of emptiness, spaciousness. Of course, it's still a perception. <clears throat> it's still, if you like, a subtle object. But it helps to open us. It's very difficult for truth to penetrate through all the barriers of the tensions that is most people hold in their bodies, in their breathing. Um, but when we come to this feeling of spaciousness, we become, I would say, more available to the truth, to the ultimate. In the same way as we let go all the ideas in our head of who we take ourselves to be, the memories, the ideas, the personality, um, we become more available to truth. So it's a matter of releasing, letting go, all the luggage that we carry with us. It brings us to a state of openness, of availability. Um, because we can never grasp truth. We can only come to this readiness, this availability to receive it. When we do, there's nothing that you receive. It's just you know yourself, and you know yourself, nothing has changed, but you know what is real and not the projection that you've always taken yourself to be. You know what's always been there. You know what is beyond change. You can never grasp it, you can only be it. Thank you very, very much, Billy, and probably for the sake of time, if you would like to do the final segment now, the guided We will. Thank you. Thank you, Kieran. So just be in a comfortable sitting position, feeling where you're actually sitting, where you touch the ground or chair, where your feet are resting, where your hands are, let the hands, the arms, be at rest. So the eyes are closed. And just experience what we call the body. Without men. As if you've never felt it before. What does it, how does it appear? Feel it without thinking. You can experience your hand. their warmth, their vibration. Don't try to feel the hands. Just wait for the feeling to come to you. Experience your arm.
Let awaken your feet. your legs, so the mind, leave it aside, just let the feeling speak. Feel your trunk, do I tend to let it slump a little bit or can I allow that feeling of effortless verticality, the spine floating? Travel up your spine. Feel your head as a continuation. Can you sense your lips? The inner walls of your mouth? Feel the whole space of your mouth, the inner space. How does the jaw feel? Let awaken the feeling of the eye. Feel their spaciousness. When you come to the feeling of the relaxed eyes, it affects your brain. Let us experience also the brain, feel the left hemisphere of your brain. Give it all the space. Feel the right hemisphere of your brain. Give it all the space. Left, left and right hemisphere as one. Come back to the feeling of your eye. Let them soften. And now, feel the whole of your face. Again, feel your hand. Your feet. And now just listen to your whole body. Feel its warmth, its vibration, whatever comes up. Without name, just the pure feeling.
Feel the front of your body. Feel its warmth and radiation spreading out in front of you. Like you're embracing space. Is there really any border when you experience what is? Feel the left side of your body. Open to space. Feel the right side of your body. Open to space. Feel your back. Let the feeling come to life. No effort, just wait. Feel the expansion of your back behind you. And now come to the global feeling of your body. Open in all directions. One feeling. Don't listen to your body from your head. The head is just part of what you listen to. You're one with the space all around you. You're merging in the space. This feeling of spaciousness frees us from living in the head. And now just let yourself rest in the stillness, the silence, that which you cannot think. Hear the sound with your whole body.
So thank you for coming today. Um, uh, I'm sorry about, I was unable to unmute uh, myself and at the beginning, but um, finally we got there. So thank you, Kieran, for inviting me and um, thank you all for coming.